I put this question out on the YouTube community tab. Had about 800 or so of you vote, and 79% said yes, you want us to do a live YouTube show for the college football playoffs. Initial top 25 rankings coming out Tuesday night. You'll see it tomorrow. Join us at 6.45 p.m. Eastern time. Make sure you are subscribed to the channel, youtube.com slash Michigan TV. Just hit that subscribe button. It's really easy. And if you want to go another level, if you already subscribed, make sure your notifications are turned on on your phone, whatever it is, so you get a notification. And boom, Yoder's live. We're going to dive right in. We will be live for about 90 minutes, revealing the rankings as they happen. You won't miss out on anything, revealing them or watching them with us. Then we will look at forward to Michigan's game against Rutgers and some other storylines, Michigan football news and rumors. Plus, I'll take your questions for about 20 minutes to wrap up tomorrow's show. So make sure you join us 6.45 p.m. Eastern on Tuesday. It is the Michigan football report from Chat Sports coming up right now. All right, a lot of things to talk about. We're going to start in with uh, some legal uh, conversations and criminal conversations. Then we're going to switch gears and look forward to what Michigan's uh, running back Blake Corum might have to do to win the Heisman. Plus, I've got my five Monday takeaways from Saturday night's 29-7 win over Michigan State. All right, I am your host, James Yoder. Let's take a look at the top story of today. A lot of things have been coming out. Jamon Green playing the press charges after being assaulted in a tunnel on Saturday night. He was struck in the face, back and shoulder by Michigan State players. Um, and there's talk now from a lawyer that he has retained, Tom Mars. You may remember this name. He represented Shea Patterson. He represented Justin Fields with their you know, cases against the NCAA back in 2018, 2019, trying to get instant eligibility. His name's been out there for a bunch of different stuff. He was big trying to get into the NIL game, you know, summer of 2021. He has put out a few tweets. He texted with, uh, what's the guy's name? Pat Forty from wherever the hell he works at this point right now. And basically says two things. Number one, uh, the text to Forty from Thomas Mars about the Gmon Green potential lawsuit against Michigan State and or criminal charges coming up uh, against one or more Michigan football players. When a college football player is brutally attacked by opposing members of the team with their helmets, resulting in concussions and other injuries, an apology won't suffice. There have to be severe consequences, is what Mars said to Pat Forty. Not only does Jermon Green deserve to be compensated for his injuries, severe consequences needed to happen to defer these things from happening in the future, etc., etc. A slap on the wrist will not suffice, is what uh, Thomas Mars sent out via text message that was put on to Twitter. So before we dive more into the story, give us more details, I'll ask you this question. From what you've seen, the uh, six, seven guys kind of jumping Jaden McBurrows in the in the tunnel on Saturday, and then the multiple videos, which I'll dive into in a second, of Jamon Green being surrounded by two or three Michigan State players, then hit over the head and shoulders and back at least three times with a Michigan State helmet. Do these Michigan State players deserve to be criminally prosecuted? Comment below why or and let me know what you guys think. Why for yes and for no. All right, so as we are going to film today, uh, this afternoon, just coming up on 4 o'clock Eastern, another video came out within the last hour. I tweeted it out, so if you didn't see yet, the link to uh, the video is down in the comments and the description of today's YouTube show. But Michigan cornerback Kerry Crump, uh, it's K-H-A-R-Y, uh, his last name C-R-U-M-P, was very noticeably, very uh, obviously seen taking at least two, if not three, swings of his Michigan State white football helmet over the head, striking Jamon Green in the head, striking him in the shoulders, and potentially elsewhere. We're kind of obstructed by uh, the view there, but ABC released the footage they had at the end of the tunnel, right by the locker rooms, going all the way down, and you could see uh, Jamon Green and why Jim Harbaugh was so visibly upset and so uh, you know loose with the word assault and things like that. So. I think Crump, at worst, is going to get kicked off Michigan's team for at least this season, if not longer. But it's unacceptable, right? This wasn't on the field of play. Uh, this wasn't uh, two guys going at it and pulling each other's helmets or, you know, one guy giving a violent hit on another and he just out of nowhere took it off. This was six, seven, eight, ten minutes after the game going up the tunnel um, and these guys drawing back and forth and you taking your helmet and swinging it, hitting a guy three or four times, do you know how hard a football helmet is? I mean, I've got a mini Michigan football helmet on my desk. Jack, how much money would it take for you to let me hit you over the head with that little mini thing three or four times? A few mil, okay? I, I, no one's going to take a hit over a helmet with a big helmet. And uh, I do think Gmon Green will uh, pursue with Tom Mars, who is apparently also Jim Harbaugh's personal lawyer, 
they will pursue some sort of financial reward from Michigan State. The player, although I'm not sure how much they get from here, maybe Mel Tucker directly or the Michigan State Athletic Department. I bet Jamon Green gets a few hundred grand for what happened to him, and Michigan State, multiple Michigan State players, could end up with a uh, legal violation of some sort on their record. Switching gears a big time to uh, recruiting. Um, I don't know if it's the best scene for you to your players to be getting in brawls in the tunnel when you've got five-star quarterbacks on campus, but nevertheless shouldn't impact um, Jaden Davis's future with Michigan or without Michigan much at all. But uh, there's a lot of buzz. I haven't got a direct source on this one yet, so I'm just going to tell you guys what's being talked about out there. A lot of the recruiting blog boys are putting in their crystal balls that Jaden Davis gave every indication that he intends to be part of Michigan's 2024 class, the five-star quarterback from Charlotte, North Carolina, Potentially down to Michigan and Clemson. Came for the fourth time since the summer. Second night game this year for Michigan. And I don't know if he saw the aerial assault that he was hoping for potentially. But I think uh, him traveling up on his own dime again with one of his high school teammates as well uh, is looking good for Michigan. Uh, we'll see if he does commit though. If it goes another couple months though, I told you last week what's he looking for but all indications are that he had the time of his life and is ready to uh, pledge to be Michigan's Biggest commit in the 2024 class. Coming up, I've got five takeaways from Saturday night's game that you guys will want to stick around for and watch. But before we dive into my takeaways, I want to make sure you know the latest happenings around the University of Michigan football program. Jake Moody has, for the second time this season, been named Big Ten Special Teams Player of the Week. He was 5 for 5 on field goals. Uh, what was it, four of them, I think, were in the red zone, maybe three, four in the red zone, and then a 54-yarder that he had in this game, which is his career-long second time he's been named that, and he had, was it, 17 points in the day, five field goals plus two extra points. On the offensive side of the ball, Blake Corum, 177 yards, the workhorse, 33 carries, two touchdowns. He was Big Ten Player of the Week um, in Michigan's third game of the year against, was it, UConn, when he had five rushing touchdowns. Corum is putting together a season for the ages as Michigan's superstar running back. Could be the uh, you know season of the ages in college football this season in a lot of ways because those Heisman rumblings aren't going away. We're going to update the favorite graphic if a lot of you guys have had so far this season on social media. Let's take a look. After eight games, where, do he, where does he rank with the last two Heisman running backs, Derrick Henry and Mark Ingram? The stats are looking pretty good. Now, since Corum had a, uh, a receiving touchdown, I changed the stats to include receiving touchdowns too. Now, uh, Mark Ingram had three at this point in the season. Derrick Henry, none. So Ingram got a little bump in, in, in touchdowns. Corum got one. But he's leading all those guys in touchdowns. He's leading all of them in receive, rushing yards so far. And only one carry behind Derrick Henry. I've taken a look. I am the world's greatest Heisman Trophy historian. I believe this is what Blake Corum needs to do to win the Heisman Trophy. Now, I will state this. I am assuming that... Uh, Hendon Hooker in Tennessee will lose this weekend to Georgia. But if he gets over the next five games, because Michigan's got four in the schedule and the Big Ten Championship game, that's number three there. 750 rushing yards, okay, reasonable. Uh, nine touchdowns, maybe on the, low on the high side, but that would give him 24 for the season, uh, rushing and receiving. And then you beat Ohio State, you go directly head-to-head -head with C.J. Stroud, get the win in Columbus, hopefully wrapping up a 12-0 regular season, go to the Big Ten Championship game, able to get another 100-plus yards, touchdown or two. Here's where he ranks in the Heisman Trophy betting markets right now. Hendon Hooker, after this past week's game against Kentucky, leading into the game against number one Georgia, could be a number one versus two matchup in the college football playoff rankings. They're one and tied for two in the AP poll. C.J. Stroud is now the, uh, the second best odds. Caleb Williams, that one seems weird to me. But Blake Corum, number four in the Heisman betting odds right now. If you bet $10 on Blake Corum at plus one, you know, $1,600, that's 160 bucks, right? You bet 100, 1600 bucks. That's how odds work. And you can make a bet right now on Blake Corn for the Heisman, on Michigan to win the Big Ten, to win the national championship, to beat Rutgers by 24, 25 points coming up this weekend. And you got to do it with our sportsbook partner, BetUS. Go to promo, go to jetsports.com slash bet, promo code GOBLUE, gets you the 125% deposit bonus. Chatsports.com slash go blue. Promo code go blue. I think I said bet, but that link actually works as well. It's chatsports.com slash go blue. Promo code go blue. Get going with BetUS. Make a better two down the stretch and bet on Michigan football. I put some money on Blake Corum now to win the Heisman. I think my JJ McCarthy $250 bet for the Heisman is gone by the wayside. But nevertheless, I'm going to make it up and win my cash back with Blake Corum. Chatsports.com slash go blue. 
Let's bring it back. 26 days till Mission plays Ohio State, folks. Get down in the comments. Do our anthem. BOSA. B-O-S-A. Spam it down in the comments. Beat Ohio State again if you're with me. Broncos country, Michigan country, Wolverines country. Let's ride. Spam it down in the comments. BOSA. We've been doing this for two and a half, two years, ten month, nine months and 31 days. Um, ten months and 31 days, I should say. Uh, we've been chanting the BOSA um, horn, chanting the BOSA uh, phrase, and Michigan has not lost to Ohio State since, so make sure you're with me. Type BOSA down in the comments. Here are my over my reactions, I would say. Not overreactions anymore. It's been 40-plus hours since the game. My reactions to this game on Monday. This game played out exactly as expected, although I do think Michigan should have and could have scored a few more times in the red zone. So don't act surprised, right, because I told you so. Jack, we got the tape? We got the tape? Go back to Thursday's video. Go ahead and roll that tape. Don't get rattled if Michigan State takes an early lead. I'm going to cut this part of the video. I'm going to slap it upside some people's head that start freaking out in the first quarter if Michigan State gets off to a hot start because – that's what teams are supposed to do if they are massive underdogs, like Michigan State is here, being uh, over three touchdown underdog to Michigan. And you saw this maybe graphic on yesterday's video, but did want to touch on it one more time. The play, the game plan that Mel Tucker has got is they think the only chance to stay in this game, and get the upset, is to stop, hard, stop, uh, start hot and be able to have a 7- or a 10-point lead early on. They're going to script three or four offensive drives that they think are their best play calls, and their you know, effort is to stop. Don't act surprised. You heard it from me. I almost cut that video and put it out on Saturday night around halftime. I was a little too busy with other things. So that's what we, play, what we expected. Michigan State was going to do everything in their arsenal to keep it a close game by halftime. That's what they did. Michigan came out and shut the Spartans out in the second half. I want to thank everyone who has followed me on Twitter in the last four or five days. I've gained about you know, 85, 90 people since last Thursday's show where I said we're trying to get to 9,000. So only 33 away. Uh, maybe Elon Musk uh, took me off the shadow ban list. I don't know. Maybe that's what happened. But um, next five people who follow me, I'm at 8967. So from 68 through 8972, I'm going to follow back the next five people at James Yoder on Twitter. My second reaction coming in 40 hours or so after the game is Michigan's got a bad red zone offense, folks, and I am very concerned. I do think that Michigan's passing game is unimaginative, and even when Blake Corum scored a you know, receiving touchdown, it was still kind of a gimmicky play, right? It was a shovel pass from J.J. McCarthy to Corum. Uh, glad Corum got in the end zone, but we've seen this all year now. Michigan, outside of those first three kind of gimme games to start the year, have had a very uh, rudimentary passing game in the red zone or just red zone scoring all together. So I want to ask you guys this question. How concerned are you guys with Michigan's red zone offense? I want to hear from you guys. I am at scale of 1 to 10. I'm going to put it at 8 right now because this is 8 games into the year and the story has been the same the entire season that Michigan is unimaginative and really doesn't have any sort of passing game. If Blake Corum is just not breaking off 7, 8 yards in the running game to score a touchdown, Michigan's ultimately settling for field goals. Number three reaction from Saturday night is the second half dominance of this team and this mostly defense in a lot of ways has been a pleasure and a wonderful thing to see. Michigan in the last three games has only given up three total points. How about that? Three total points um, in the last three games against Indiana, Penn State, Michigan State. Got the shutout against Michigan State, shut out Indiana in the second half, and then gave up that three points to Penn State in the third quarter. That put the Nittany Lions up 17-16 momentarily, and then Michigan you know, ripped off the next 24 points to win that game, or 25 points to win that game, 41-17. to Next up, number four, the passing game is blank. I don't know what the passing game is right now because we've seen – Great passes from J.J. McCarthy downfield. We've seen accurate passes from J.J. McCarthy. Kind of guys streaking across the middle of the field. Ronnie Bell, Luke Schoonmaker, Eric All before he was out for the season. We've seen him hit Diamond Edwards on little passes here and there. But I think my word right there, the passing offense is inconsistent and probably underwhelming right now. And I'm not sure if that's Michigan just not willing to pass the ball right now because they're doing so well running the ball, another 250-plus yards against Michigan State, or it was a serious problem with the offensive philosophy of Jim Harbaugh and his offensive coordinators because J.J. McCarthy right now, to me, looks not much different than Cade McNamara last year in the passing game. What McCarthy does bring that he brought Saturday night, of course, is his running game that McNamara did not have. 
I want you guys to grade Michigan's passing offense through eight games. Give me an A, B, C, D, or F down in the YouTube comments. I'm going to go with a C plus at this point. Um, I know McCarthy is still um, is what 74, 75% of his passes so far this season. Went 15 of 25 on Saturday night. But it has not been consistent, and it has not been a threat. It has not been a threat to score touchdowns throughout most of the season so far. So I'm going to give him a C. I'm going to go with C plus right now is what I'm going to give the uh, – the passing offense. Let me know what you guys think. A, B, C, D, or F. Use pluses, use minuses. Just get down in the comments. All eyes for Michigan are going to be on the college football playoff. It's an interesting stat, right? ESPN's uh, football power index came out again. They updated every Sunday, Monday. And the odds for Michigan to win the Big Ten are not great right now. You can toss it up on screen, Jack. It's cool. 21.1% uh, is the odds that the FPI has to give Ohio, Michigan to win the Big Ten, right? And Ohio State's got like 65% chance, and then like there's a bunch of schools like 2% chance, 2% chance, you know how percentages work. But over 50% chance to make the college football playoff. What they're really banking on here is that, according to ESPN's FPI, is that Michigan loses a close game at Ohio State and dominates the, the next three games prior to that. And the SEC and uh, – uh, uh, who's the other uh, SEC Clemson and and TCU is what I was trying to think of those teams lose and Michigan's loss to a number one or number two Ohio State was so impressive that Michigan still gets in the college football playoff as the third or fourth seed so there's a couple other teams that have 50% or higher odds um, Alabama Tennessee and Georgia all have higher 50% odds so um, it's not necessarily unique to Michigan at this point but those are the odds to win the Big Ten and to make the college football playoff according to ESPN's FPI what number will Michigan be ranked in the first college football playoff top 25 Tuesday night, tomorrow night? Let me know what you guys think. I think Michigan's going to get snubbed here. I think you're going to see them ranked number five. I don't, won't be happy with it. I think it's complete BS if they are, but I think they're going to put Georgia, Tennessee, probably Tennessee one, Georgia two to make that like, oh, such an amazing game. Number one going on the road to number two. Ohio State will be three. I'm just guessing they're going to put TCU or Clemson up there. Both of them have more top 25 wins than Michigan so far this season. I'm guessing Michigan is going to get snubbed by at least one, uh, if not two of those teams. I'm going to put Michigan as number five is my guess, although I think they should probably be three or four um, based on any um, normal ranking system of how dominant Michigan has been so far this year. So we will be live tomorrow, folks. Make sure you subscribe, youtube.com slash Michigan TV. You're watching here. Uh, depending on what platform you're looking at, you've either got a red subscribe button or a black subscribe button. Whatever it is, just hit subscribe. There's a little check mark next to it. You will be subscribed to the most watched Michigan football show on planet Earth and Mars and Mars. So uh, join us live tomorrow, 6.45 p.m. Eastern time. We'll be live for about 90 minutes. Until I see you guys tomorrow, go blue.